Good morning, Packers fans. Aaron Nagler here with your Packers Daily Chat, coming to you live on Tuesday morning, a few days removed from the debacle that is the loss to the San Francisco 49ers in the divisional round. The offseason stretches out before us into the unknown, as they sang in Frozen 2. Yes, I have daughters. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, obviously a lot of pieces need to come together uh, as far as the salary cap. The biggest piece is Aaron Rodgers. Who knows when that decision gets made? I know he has spoken about not wanting to let drag things drag out. Um, we'll most likely get some kind of indication either way prior to the start of free agency, which is in mid-March. Until then, we're left to pick over the detritus of that loss in the playoffs and look back at a season that had such promise and can be chalked up to yet another missed opportunity for the Green Bay Packers organization. Good morning to everybody in the comment section. Hope you're all doing well. Good to see everybody. Plenty of people joining us way, way early. Good to see everybody. James, thank you for your comments. Much appreciated. Pack Dat, what's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. Thanks for all you and Cheesehead TV does. It's been great following you all this year. Listen to Matt LaFleur yesterday. And how is it even possible to bring the band back together next year? It's not. Not as we know it. Um, I know he's talking about moving money around and making adjustments. And look, there is, you know, a a bit that Russ Ball can do. Go look at the situation the Saints were in last year heading into 2020 or 2021 and look at the, you know, the team they ended up fielding. Very competitive. And I think they would have been right there in the mix with, for the playoffs if their quarterback hadn't gotten hurt, right? I'm not here sitting here telling you that that's what's going to happen with the Packers in the sense of um, how they go about making things work. I do think they'll be able to keep a few people. I think there are going to be some hard decisions, as Matt did say. Um, I think there's no doubt that the roster is going to look very, very different. What I find interesting is Rogers' comments after the game saying he doesn't want to be part of a rebuild. That's very interesting and, and uh, a great semantic point in the sense of what do you consider a rebuild? Because I don't think the Packers are going to be rebuilding, so to speak, but they are going to look very different. And they are going to have to rely on a, on a bunch of younger talent if they end up finding a way to keep Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, uh, Devondre Campbell, uh, you know, re-signing uh, extensions, finding, you know, signing extensions for Jair, probably Adrian Amos, etc. cetera. Um, it's a lot of work to do. And what exactly does Aaron consider a rebuild? Because they kept the band together one last shot with this crew. And obviously it came up short. This is time to rip that Band-Aid off. And, you know, every move they make is clearly with some kind of plan in place as far as the next four or five years. Uh, and we all know next year, not this offseason, but next offseason, the salary cap explodes because of the new media money. Um, but until then, you know, the team they field next year is going to have a very I could just say a thrift store feel to it, but it is going to have to be, uh, they're going to have to be very smart about how they allocate things. Let's put it that way. Eric, thanks for the super chat. Took your advice, read Russian literature, Tolstoy's death of Ivan Ilyich in case playoffs went bad. Any books to suggest to get through rebuild years? <laughs> they're not rebuilding, they're reloading. Eric, um, I don't, I, nothing comes to mind off the top of my head other than maybe, uh, I, I did read some, uh, I reread uh, Moscow 1941, which is a nonfiction book. Um, this is the first thing that pops into my head when it comes to Russia at the moment. But uh, also Stalingrad is a great read. But those are both nonfiction. Those aren't, those aren't exactly Russian literature. Um, let me have a think on it. Big B is here. What's up, Big B? Dale Norton. Good day from London. Good day from New York, sir. Hope you're well. Grim Chief, what's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. Push come to shove. Are they keeping Campbell and Sewell? It's gonna be difficult. It's gonna be real difficult. I'd be very surprised if they didn't find a way to get Campbell done. Rasul, I think, could be, you know, the the way they sell Rasul, obviously, is look, you bounced around, you finally found a home. And if his agent tries to strike it while the iron's hot, so to speak, you know, his name is never gonna be hotter. Um, the Packers will undoubtedly point out, well, look, you've been with five other teams. You've not, you know, you've never played this well. 
You know, it's, it's a testament to his work. There's no question about it. But the scheme, the guys he's playing with, that factors into it as well. And I'm sure the Packers will press that and try to get him to take something, if not well below market value, something that gives them uh, a minimal cap hit, at least early on. Uh, Jeff, thanks for the super chat. Coach talked about a super secret plan to sign players. Okay, he didn't say it was super secret. Let's be clear. Can you ask him what it is? I'm sure he'll tell you if you give him that look. <laughs> Jeff, sure. Sure. Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just phone him up. Michael, thanks for the super chat. If Rodgers isn't back, I want them to draft a first-round wide receiver. <coughs> Michael woke up today and chose violence. A nuclear family, thanks for the super chat. Don't worry, NFL. I've fixed the OT rules, and it's simple. If Team A scores a TD... Team B has to score in less plays, puts more strategy in the toss, too. Just go back to sudden death. It was so much better than all this nonsense. Andrew, thanks for the super chat. This feels like a bad breakup. Loss still hurting. Woke up this morning and realized, God, I already miss Packers football. Yeah, that's that's the killer, right? We take it for granted, the playoffs, in the sense that we get more games than, you know, 20-plus other teams. And then when you lose, it's, oh, boy, that sudden realization of no Packers football until September, essentially. I mean, we'll have the draft to talk about free agency. Team building is cool. I do love the offseason in the sense or for the reason of team building. I'm fascinated by that aspect of it. You know, the draft industrial complex kind of tries to suck the joy out of it. But I do love that kind of part of it. And then, of course, training camp. Once training camp starts, it's on, right? That's great. But damn, that does feel like a long, long way away. Marshall, thanks for the super chat. If Aaron returns, do you see him taking significantly less money a la Tom Brady? I mean, if he doesn't want to rebuild, that may be his only option. I'm sure the Packers will mention it. Um, you know, currently he has a obviously a huge, significant chunk of change on their salary cap for next season. Um, an extension. And that, you know, that final year was voided. So that this next season is the last year on his deal. Um, so if the Packers were to sign him to an extension, you better believe they'll be doing so while making sure his cap hit is, you know, minimal as possible for next season. No doubt about it. Ryan, thanks for the super chat. I trust in 22 will be okay. The NFC North sucks. Well, we don't know what the NFC North is going to look like. I mean, yes, they're going to have new coaches and, Minnesota and Chicago, but what if they hit home run hires? I, I stop laughing. It's possible. So, you know, they've got talent in both of those those cities, and I mean, Detroit is Detroit. They just beat the Packers, right? I know Packers didn't play everybody, but you know, I don't think I'm not sitting here saying like it isn't. You know, if you're going to choose a, a situation to be in while you're making this transition, yeah, it's not a bad situation to be in. As far as two teams that are searching for coaches, GMs, etc., cetera, um, no systems in place, what have you. You've got Matt LaFleur. He's been there three years, heading into year four. Your foundation is set. Yes, you've got to figure out the quarterback part of it, which is significant. But yes, the Packers are in much better shape than any of the other three teams in the North. There's zero doubt about that. No question. <laughs> Omega weapon. Everyone takes a pay cut? What world are you living in? Are we all sit here and we want the Packers to be as good as possible and we all want them to get together and keep the guys all together. We like this ain't yellow submarine, man. They ain't all living together like happy harmony. They want to get paid. They're professionals. They're good at what they do and they deserve to get paid. Ain't nobody taking no pay cut. This ain't Jan Yurkovich back in what, 95? Walter, thanks for the super chat. Hey, Nag, it's been a long time. Miss you, guy. I'm all for bringing back Devontae. But do you really think giving him the franchise tag is beneficial, given he's already subliminally said he won't be happy about it? No player will be happy about it. That's why the Packers haven't used it. That's what's so funny. It's like they they rattle their saber saying, mm, yep, Bo, we could put the franchise tag on you. But they literally never do it for that exact reason. Because they you know they know players hate it. Agents hate it, clearly, but players hate it. You know, it was so funny that it was created as this sign of respect for the best players in the league and so that teams could try to keep their guys. 
But given what you know, you're able to make on the open market, it is a slap in the face. So, yeah, I again, I said at the time, I think that's very much the dance that has to get danced. You know, yes, the Packers are going to leak. Oh, we could put the franchise tag on you. And of course, Devontae is going to say, mm, you know, if Aaron goes, I could that could really affect my position, and I could probably want to, I might want to go with him, etc. You know, they, these are things that are put out there, or the breaking off of talks, like. Oh, all of that is just part of the negotiation dance. When push comes to shove, they're going to get something done with Devontae. I truly believe that. Um, remember, we all thought Aaron Jones was out the door. And that got done almost literally at the last second. I'm not saying it's going to take that long for Devontae, but I suspect they'll get something done. As Mark Murphy said, they want to give future Hall of Famers third contracts. Those are the ones that they usually sign to third deals. I think Devontae is definitely on the track for the Hall of Fame. And I think they'll find a way to keep him in the fold. I mean, the Aaron Rodgers part is a wild card. Don't get me wrong. But I think they'll get it done. Michael, thanks for the super chat. I'll be repetitive, but we're truly thankful for you and all at Cheesehead TV. Thank you, Michael. It's been a pleasure. Hope all is healthy at the Nagler household. Uh, the girls are great. I can't get rid of this fucking cough to save my life. But um, thank you for the sentiments. Craig, thanks for the super chat. Special teams were so bad that I was nostalgic for Zook. Oh, man. Now I know Packers fans are down bad. To what extent did the special teams problem stem from coaching as opposed to a lack of emphasis in roster building? We've stunk at special teams since Holmgren left. <coughs> I think it's a, a kind of a toxic soup. I think not enough uh, emphasis is placed on it in the construction of the roster. I think not enough emphasis is placed on it by the head coach and the coaching staff. And I think the players are asking, um, I think they're somewhat too many soup, uh, soups in the kitchen, <laughs> chefs in the kitchen. Um, if you're facing this problem and you're, you know, it's an issue, you've got to empower someone to clean it up, you know? And I know that was supposed to be Mo Drayton, but it's clearly, still um like a fire like a hose just going all a yard hose just going all over the place like you go in there you don't you go, that it's evident in that last play when they have 10 guys in the field i mean matt said yes we counted wrong in the box what i mean who is in charge how many people are counting we counted wrong in the box what i just kind of just numbs my soul um, speaking of numbing your soul <laughs> what a transition uh let's give a shout out to our good friends over at woodson whiskey ladies and gentlemen you want to try this stuff i'm telling you it's available now in wisconsin you want to go find yourself a bottle woodsonwhiskey.com you can follow them at woodson whiskey it's such it's such good stuff i had they sent a bottle to my home and a bottle to the studio i absolutely enjoyed it on saturday night i'll be having some this evening Make sure you get yourself some Woodson whiskey. Shout out to the goat, Charles Woodson. Woodson whiskey. If it wasn't your game day whiskey, it is now. Get on it, people. You know you want to do it. Uh, Alex, thanks for the super chat. I recommend, I can't say that name, Master and Margarita. I read that when I was a much younger man. I should revisit it. That is a very, that's a very good call. Um, Andy, thanks for the super chat. We always hear about Rodgers needing to trust his receivers. Well, Lazard had 194 yards and four touchdowns over the last three games of the season. How do you explain that reliability and form being ignored by him versus San Francisco or from being ignored by him in San Francisco? Hey, man, the only one that can answer that is Aaron Rodgers and somewhat maybe Matt LaFleur. But, you know, it, it's kind of baffling to me that he was, you know, essentially ignored. Um you would think, especially after the San Francisco defense adjusted, started bracketing Adams um, after that first drive, you would think Lazard, 6'4", big guy, give him a couple opportunities in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Even if he's not, you know, blazingly like two steps wide open. But for whatever reason, Rodgers didn't want to go there, and he's the only one who knows why. It's frustrating. There's no question about it. But, you know, there are opportunities there on the tape. And now uh, sometimes it's he's looking someplace and Allen's on the backside and just doesn't see him. And that happens. Every QB does that. 
But what is interesting to me is between Lazard and Cobb, who are your two wide receivers you would think in that game without MVS, they would at least want to involve a little bit. I just didn't look like they ever really drew something up for him, or for either one of them specifically, other than maybe that last play when Rodgers chucked it deep, when Devontae was double covered, where Adam, uh, where Lazard is breaking wide open. I did notice that Matt was asked, is that play designed specifically for, you know, to try and get Lazard at the first down? And he did not answer the question, not directly. So I suspect, yes, that was designed for Lazard. Um, but that's just a suspicion. Again, we don't know the reads. Only Aaron can tell. And it is beyond frustrating. No doubt about it. Alex, thanks again. What's your take on the Matt LaFleur presser? Was it just to keep 12's value? Because if Aaron Rodgers stays, then it likely means no fifth year for love. Why does why does one equal the other? Why not keep control of your young quarterback? No fifth year for love? Why? That makes no sense. Um, and no, I don't think it was about gamesmanship to try and increase the trade value for Aaron Rodgers. I think his trade value is very high, regardless. Um, especially if he wins what everyone suspects will be his second MVP in a row, you know, he'll be able to, <laughs> if they want to trade him, they'll, they'll get something for him. No doubt about it. They'll get a lot more than they got for Brett Favre. I'll tell you that. Um, but yeah, no, I don't. If Aaron Rodgers stays. Jordan loves entering his third year. I don't get it, man. I'm going to have to clarify that one for me. Sean, thanks for the super chat. Razul, Cobb, Gary, Jones are incredible humans. I know two of them pretty well, and the other two, it would certainly seem so. Very much agree with your assessment. Ed, thanks for the super chat. Saturday night's loss brought out my inner snark yesterday. I have total respect for Rodgers on the field. He's always given 100%. Agree with that sentiment. Um, may not always be <clears throat> to our liking, so to speak, but yes, I, I would never question his competitive drive let's put it that way no question pack dat thanks for the super chat can you explain how void years work and what's the downside to it um there is an acceleration cap wise i'm not smart enough to explain it uh i think ken ingles has it on his twitter feed somewhere if you do a search um but there it, it is not without consequence i know um i believe who uh, kevin king has several void years on his deal when they resigned him for salary cap maneuverability purposes, but um, someone much smarter than myself has to explain that. David. David's in the offseason. Look at David here. Biggest needs? Man, there's a list, right? Um, it really depends on what kind of construction they're able to get out of the guy, the guys that are already on hand. Um, you know, linebacker could rocket up the the charts if they are unable to take or keep Devondre Campbell in the fold. It's probably still somewhat of a need. Um, wide receiver, it's a yearly thing, right? Um, they, I think it would help if they continue to augment the offensive line as they have the last two years. Um, I think, you know, you're always looking for good corners, although they seem to be at a pretty good spot there. Although who knows if Razul Douglas is able to stick around. There, you know, a lot depends on kind of the Aaron Rodgers piece and the trickle down effects. It's a little early to get uh, a good read on that, I would say. Nicholas, thanks for the super chat. Can you see Jordan Love sitting two more years? I don't know about two more years, but I could definitely see him sitting one more year. That would put him at the three years that Aaron sat. And then maybe they're on their way with Jordan as a starter. I mean, people keep saying you can't do that in today's NFL. I mean, I don't think the Packers care about how things are done in today's NFL. You know, look, just look at the fact that they took Jordan Love. It's not something that most teams would do. Chase, thanks for the super chat. Matt LaFleur's outside call list better include Billy B. <laughs> Good call, Chase. Good call. Uh, Boyan G, what's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. Do they really want Rodgers back, or is it just sending – the ball to Aaron's court. I think they really want Aaron back. Um, now, I do think it's going to be an interesting conversation uh, for all the parties involved. Aaron, Mark, starting with Mark, um, Goody, and Matt. 
Matt, of course, wants Aaron back. Matt's uh, of all of the people that want Aaron back. Matt's the one I least doubt. You know, coaches want to win football games, and Aaron gives them the best chance right now to win those games. You know, but as far as good against Murphy and Russ Ball and having a long term plan, I suspect they want him back. But I, I also suspect that, you know, at some point, it's time to rip the band aid off. I thought it arrived on Saturday night. They may disagree. We'll see. Um, <laughs> Chad, Chad Wiley with the uh, efficient breakdown here. Rodgers chokes every time in the playoffs. Time to trade him. Who's to say the Packers don't feel the same way? It's very early in the offseason. We will have to find out. Oh, let's give a shout out to our good friends over at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Do it, people. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use promo code Cheesehead. That's promo code Cheesehead. You can get yourself some uh, great odds. You can get same day parlays, player props, everything you need. DraftKings Sportsbook app. If it's not available, if it's not available in your area, you can check out the DraftKings Fantasy app, obviously. They're giving away millions of dollars of prizes. You want to check them out. But the DraftKings Sportsbook app is where it's at. Uh, download it. You can not just NFL, because obviously there's only three more games that matter in the NFL. NBA, NHL, MLB, maybe if uh, they get that lockout thing sorted out. But just check it out. Use promo code CHEESEHEAD. That's what you want. And get yourself uh, all set there on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. I'll get a few more chats here. LT, what's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. Let's get Pat McAfee to come coach special teams. He can do his show from Lambeau, too. I don't know about that, but how about John Kuhn breaking down the special teams yesterday on his Twitter feed? That's impressive stuff. Clinic, thanks for the super chat. Thoughts on Jordan Love at this point, regardless of Rogers' future in Green Bay, do you think he could really be our starter, or should we look to move him? Let me ask you this. If you don't think, and I suspect by this question, you you think he's not the starter. He's not starter material. They don't. You don't think that he should be the starter. What have other teams seen that would make them want to trade for him? This is a classic NFL fan thing, and I'm not picking on you, Clinic, but it's like, all these guys we have that we've soured on, we want to get rid of, will you give us draft picks for him? Why would anyone want to trade for your castoffs? And that's not to say that that doesn't happen on occasion, uh, the the you know, change of scenery type uh, trade, but why would a team trade for Jordan Love when they can just draft someone, get their own guy in their own system? You know, Jordan Love, on the public side of it, his one start against Kansas City sure as didn't light the world on fire. There's not a ton of tape there to make you go, yep, that's our guy. We got to trade a pick for him. You know, now maybe they've done more work on him uh, from his college days, what have you, and they think they can mold him. But, you know, that is highly unlikely. The Packers picked Jordan Love. They're trying to develop him. I think he can be a starter in the league. I think he could potentially follow Aaron Rodgers. Now, whether that's this year, maybe another year from now. Yeah, I think that's the plan. But I also think that they're going to be on the lookout, as always, all the time, for the, the ability to bring in more talent at the game's most important position. We will see how it plays out. But yeah, I I do think he's capable of starting in the in the league and and guiding this offense, putting up points, etc. Is he going to be Aaron Rodgers? Of course not. Is he going to be Brett Favre? No, naturally. But there are more than one way to win in the NFL. Yes, you need a quarterback. You need a talented quarterback. Um, do you necessarily need an all-time great Hall of Famer? It helps, that's for sure, but you can definitely win games without it. Jordan Love just needs to run the offense, be efficient, limit turnovers, uh, and keep improving. That's the most important part. And all that work starts this offseason, of course. Warriors, thanks for the super chat. Hey, Nags, do you remember a few seconds ago when Green Bay lowballed a special – a few seconds ago – lowballed a special teams coordinator? Do you think Matt LaFleur promoted Mo because he was limited in his search? Maybe the front office is holding back the potential of special teams. I'm really glad you brought this up because this is one of those things that has festered into fact where the actual story is a little different than what the agent has put out there 
uh, while, you know, both while the negotiations were going on and in hindsight to make his client look good. Um, yes, Darren Rizzi was interviewed. Yeah, this is the one you're talking about, the gentleman who ended up in New Orleans. Um, he was interviewed and the Packers were interested and did want to hire him. Uh, his family did not want to move up to Green Bay. And therefore, the agent gave the Packers a pretty inflated number. Not a crazy number, not crazy, not insane, like make you kind of laugh, like what are you talking about? But a, a pretty inflated number uh, for what the position, uh, you know, would be across the league. And the Packers said, yeah, no, we, we're not going to go there. You know, we, we value you and we value what you, you know, would bring. But, uh, you know, we... We just think this is a, a little a little over the top, so to speak. And they made the decision. They didn't want to move to Green Bay for that salary and stayed down south. And that's why they went to New Orleans, because remember, he was coming from Miami. Um, should the Packers have gone above and beyond and overspent? It's easy to say, yep, 100% after watching Saturday night's game. There's no question about it. It is frustrating. But no, I don't think the front office is holding Matt back from making any kind of move he wants to make at the coaching at any coaching position. There's no doubt about it. What else we got? Matt, most hated made of Soton. Thanks for the super chat. I don't really drink anymore, but I know I'm getting me some of that Woodson whiskey. Anyways, what three players on O and D would you prioritize keeping? I don't have the list in front of me. Obviously, I think Devontae Adams is number one. Um and I'm not including Aaron Rodgers because that's like a whole separate thing. Um, Devontae Adams is number one. There's no doubt about it. He's a future Hall of Fame player. You got to keep him in the fold. Um, on defense, it's Devondre Campbell, right? I think that's pretty obvious. I just it, it's it kind of uh, it kind of beggars belief, buggers belief. Um, how night and day that inside backer position looked with him manning it, and I think. He working in tandem with Chris Barnes is kind of exactly what the Packers have been looking for for a decade or more, probably since, you know, A.J. Hawk and Desmond Bishop were running together. Um, it's just absolutely the perfect fit for both of them. So those would be my two. Marcus, thanks for the super chat. A lot of teams wish they had our problems. Probably true. Probably true. Tom, thanks for the super chat. Did 12 not trusting one, but 17 and 33 after Lewis turnover? You'd have to ask Aaron, man. Craig, thanks for the super chat. Book list, add when pride still mattered. Oh, 100%, Craig. The quintessential Lombardi biography and one of the best biographies I've ever written. Mark, thanks for the super chat. Thanks for levity and perspective this year, Nags. Finally made live one. Went to the game on Saturday. Amazing how Rodgers looked cold and old. If you were GM, what's your move? Stay or go. Give love a chance. I absolutely, I move on. I rip the Band-Aid off and I start a new era. But that's just me, GM Nagler, and you should all be thanking your lucky stars that I'm not the GM. Alex, thanks for the Super Chat. Cap reasons fifth year is like 18 million and doubt 12 only wants just one year. So in my opinion, it's too much for a backup. That's why I think Rodgers is gone. It's a very, very real possibility. We'll see. But I think they keep them, uh, probably keep them both for one more year. David, thanks for the Super Chat. Alexa, play goodbye by the Sundays. Thanks for everything 12 did for the Packers. The Sundays, good call, David. Great group. William, thank you for the super chat. Would it be ironic that they get a first rounder for Aaron and use it on a receiver? I generally think they have drafted two second rounders really well. It would be ironic, don't you think? To quote the great Alanis. T-Man, thanks for the super chat. I know it may not be popular, but I think it's time to let Rodgers go, and Adams is the best wide receiver in the game. But no non QB is worth thirty million a year. It, you got to remember, you're looking forward, always looking forward, and no wide receivers worth thirty million a year. In what year? Next year? Okay, that's rough. But two years from now, when that cap explodes, yeah, he absolutely is. Zero question. You're always looking forward, man. Always looking forward. That's the whole cap game. Barely, thanks for the super chat. I think the Deguara drop and Lewis fumble made Rodgers zone in on Adams only. Your thoughts with the pressure he had to be psychologically impacted? I mean, if he was, that's ridiculous. I mean, but only he can answer that. 
I mean, yeah, that's a brutal drop from Deguara, no question about it. Um, but not even attempting to go to Lazard and Cobb, who have been absolute money for you all year long. I don't know. I don't know. You'd, again, you'd have to ask. You'd have to ask Aaron. All right, everybody, I'm going to have to get going. I can't thank you enough for hanging out, talking Packers each and every day, Monday through Friday, right here on the Cheesehead TV social channels. Please hit like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Join Corey and I tomorrow night, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, for the season finale of Packer Transplants Live. Going to get all the therapy out of us. It's going to be a good time. Uh, in the meantime, Patreon members, happy hours tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern. The information is on the Patreon page. Uh, if you care to join us, if you want to join Patreon and support everything we do here at Cheesehead TV, just head to patreon.com slash cheesehead TV. Thanks, everybody. I hope you all have a great day. Uh, I will talk to you tomorrow. As always, tell your friends and tell your family, Cheesehead TV, we're devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Uh -huh.